All right, so we're in the leather shop today, and I believe that I have things set up so that uh, I'll be able to uh, do a decent job of filming this. I wish I would have had this set up yesterday this way, but I didn't. Anyhow, we have a belt strip here. Now you can cut this belt strip yourself using a strap cutter like this, and I'll show you real quick how that works. Let me kind of check and back and forth to make sure I'm in frame here. I'm actually going to back this up just a, just a little bit just to make sure. But this strap cutter, it's adjustable. You can adjust it all the way out to four inches. And uh, I like these wooden ones here uh, better than... Uh, no, I have another one that the blade sticks way up, but that thing... I always feel like I'm gonna cut my cut my arm off of that thing or hit it. But anyways, um, you don't have to take that big a notch off. But I like to have a little bit of the corner knocked off so it can't catch here. And you just you want to hold this up against it like this, and then you're just gonna run it down it just like that and you can strip that off a whole uh, belt bend or um, I usually cut I, I buy uh, whole sides and then cut it uh, cut the bend out of it I use the other parts for rifle slings and things like that but that's how you cut your strip and uh, then when it comes time to cut the uh, this end here so you're gonna have to thin this is eight to nine ounce leather and this can be backed with four to five ounce so if you can see this I have taken this I've marked out where my holes are gonna be my slots gonna be here for my belt buckle so that's gonna be just like that okay there's going to be two screws right here, and my belt keeper is going to be in the center like this. All right. And you can find these layouts for this online. Um, they're out there. Or you can just make it up as you go. But anyways, if you don't thin this section out right here, then you're going to have an extremely thick area where you're trying to fold this over at the buckle end and uh, you don't want it that thick so you're either going to need to use a skiver like a safety skiver like this to thin it down or you can also use a bench type uh, bench top splitter and you just it's a machine you put it in there if you're not familiar with leather you put it in there you pull the handle down and you just strip it through there and it'll it has adjustment uh, depth adjustments on it so you can take off however much you want but it's important that the buckle end is thinned down some <coughs> and this they make if you're not familiar with leather um, there's punches like this that'll cut this end perfect you don't have to have that of course you can just mark it and cut it with a swivel knife same thing for the punch in the ends and these come in a variety of different shapes and sizes um, from uh, you know half inch straps up to you know pretty big straps and in different shapes uh, tip, dip, tip designs and you may just decide to just cut a uh, you, know, you see that's pretty popular these days where they just cut a tip like this on an angle like that that's fine too this uh, let's see how far this is sticking out here if I got a ruler handy I tried to put everything up here handy but from my blast where my last hole is gonna be to the tip there is about uh, five and three eighths that gives you plenty so that if you're clear out here on this last hole you still got enough tongue to to tuck into the belt keeper if you make this too short then 
your tip won't reach around to the belt keeper and you just have this flap flopping out there and nobody likes that okay so and you can buy the you can either cut these like I said or you can buy a, a belt bend or, or a belt blank here uh, from your local uh, leather supply and uh, and it already have most of it. You can even buy them that's already got the already got snaps in here. And I don't prefer the snaps. I was a fat guy for a long time, and uh, I'd bend over, and uh, it would undo those snaps, and they'd just get weaker over time. Um, I'm not packing around all that weight now, so that's not a problem. But I still don't like the snaps. I like to use a Chicago screw, which is these little screws right here. and you punch the hole it goes through there and then it's just got a screw post post and screw and they screw together and and then we well, can take them on and off and change buckles and i usually ship all my belts with a just a standard buckle um, this is actually one of the buckles i really prefer um, i got to liking it because uh, uh like i said when i was heavier and i had that uh Dunlap, or my belly Dunlapped over my belt. Uh, the roundness of this would not dig into dig into me. I don't have that problem anymore, but I still use that buckle on several of my belts. Okay, so hopefully I'm staying in frame here. I am going to be off the ends because the belt's of course long. But the first thing we need to do here, we have our belt keeper, we got our belt strip, but we need to back this with some tape. Now, if you got headphones on, it's going to be kind of loud. So. And what this is going to do, and this is important, is this is going to strengthen the back. and help prevent the belt from stretching while we're doing the tooling process. And two strips of this, this is just 3M packing tape, get it at Sam's Club. But uh, two layers probably enough. If you don't have this and you go to tooling, when you're done, your belt's going to be an inch to two inches and sometimes more if you've got some mushy low-end leather. Uh, it can be even longer than that. So your size is going to be wrong. It's going to go wonky uh, on you. All the things that you don't want. <laughs> so I take it. This is a glass liquor. I made this case for it back when I first started leather work. It was one of the first things I ever made. And uh, I got that as a reminder there of some of my tooling. When I first started, I wasn't very far into this. I was probably only, I don't know, a, a few months into it when I made that. So, kind of cool to keep around. I got a few things like that. Okay, so we got our belt strip. And our ends cut, uh, our buckle in is that's marked out. We, I punched two holes, so when I had it folded over, I could take my measurements. This particular one's going to be 32 inches from the fold at the buckle end. It's the way the customer measurement from the fold at the buckle end to the hole she's going to wear it in. Okay, and that's all marked out. So. And most of these are going to disappear, so they'll have to be remarked. But uh, anyhow, we got our piece. And the next step is going to be to moisten this leather. So. <coughs> I'm going to try my best to stay in frame here. And I'm not going to be tooling this in, but I'm still going to get it moist because 
if you just end your water right here sometimes that'll leave a water stain but if you're wetting the leather consistently the whole length or you know it doesn't have to be super consistent but as consistent as possible then you won't get that possible little water stain there now normally I would wet this good I would lay my pattern out I'd cut it in and I'd throw it in a bag and let it case overnight and that's probably not going to happen in this video because I'm kind of in a hurry today and this belt's got to go out it's late going out <laughs> I've had some medical things going on with my back and I've been out of town and just lots of things. Some days I can't spend all day in the shop so it's affected me getting orders out uh, the way that I would like to get them out. I prided myself on never missing a deadline for years and years and years and I didn't miss any of them but with my recent uh, back issues that's that has affected things okay so we're wet enough about my back no one cares about that so let me drink soda pop here wet my whistle okay on this particular belt we are gonna do oak leaves and acorns which is my favorite Some people don't like them there's a lot of leather workers that hate oak leaves and acorns I'm not sure why they just got some sort of fond big dislike for oak leaves and acorns I'm gonna turn this this way try to get it so you can see it and it's gonna be comfortable now I went through with a marking pen these were really light. I don't know if you can even see these over here, but this is for an inch and three-quarter belt. We're doing this one inch and a half wide belt. And uh, I went through with a marking pen and darkened them up. So that hopefully you guys can see it. And I got that tape sticking out on the side, so... We can stick it down to try and hold it because it's that can get to moving on you now this is a stylus this is a custom one I had made um, I've actually got a couple of them Ed LeBaire uh, made this and let me check make sure we're still we are okay we're still good I got a brand new tripod and a brand new setup and I got a couple of arms. If you guys could see this thing I got rigged up, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. But anyways, all you're gonna do is we gotta run around every one of these lines. So, and we started this tooling just below the buckle area there. And this takes some time to go through and do all this. So if you want to know why a tool leather belt is so expensive, um, for what you're getting and the time that goes into them, it really isn't that high. There's plenty of, when you go to the Western Wear store, those are ran through a roller, which puts the design on there. And it does. they're never going to have the detail of a, hand tooled leather belt and that's why people are willing to pay the extra money to have one hand tool plus they can customize it it's 
Speaking of that, I better take a glance at the order just to make sure that there wasn't anything special. Uh, anything special ordered like the uh, initials or a brand or something like that and there wasn't and it's just a straightforward oak leaf acorn belt with a natural leather color and antique and a lot of times you can feel uh, if you're not sure where you left off you get sidetracked which is story of my life. I'm constantly sidetracked. But you can kind of feel it to see uh, if you've gone over that line. And before you just jerk this up, you'll want to kind of peel it up easy to make sure you got everything because sometimes it can be hard to get it lined back up. And this uh, pattern here that I'm tracing around here, and this is just tracing film available from just about every leather supplier. I can't remember if I drew this pattern or if I got it from someplace else. Honestly, I don't remember. I have some belt patterns that I bought that I use um, that were designed and drawn by guys way better than me at drawing. And uh, so I don't really remember whether or not this is one that I drew. It could be. Or it could not be. You might be watching this going, oh, I got that same pattern. You didn't draw that. And I'm not going to claim that I did. <laughs> because I'm not sure. And because of that, if you see this and you're wanting this pattern, I can't give it to you because, uh, or sell it to you because I um, can't remember if I drew it or not. I'd have to look back and see if I did that or not. Like I said, I've been using this for for over 13 years now. I don't do a ton of oak leaf and acorn stuff, but I do enough to make it worthwhile to have it around. So. You'll notice that some of these end here, and the reason for that is because you gotta have your side on here. Maybe that makes a little more sense. see it like that possibly so some of these are gonna run you know they're gonna run over the over this line we have here because this is gonna be a background right here so some of them are gonna pop over and some of them won't and to finish this end right here, our line's gonna come in like this here. And this will be our outside edge, and this will be a natural belt color. You'll see when that comes about, but. I'm trying to get things out of the way here. And this is just gonna repeat. So, where this ended, this here is gonna basically this little line here is is this it's the negative of that and that allows you to get lined up again so Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to finish tracing this out and then I'm going to come back to you and we will start cutting this in with a swivel knife 
and getting that where it needs to be. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I wanted to show you this. <coughs> so in case I didn't cover this, this is a wing divider and it's just adjustable and um, you'll want to get a good wing divider. There's several companies that make them. This is actually a Tandy, I think a pro uh, wing divider and it's uh, they're actually very good. Um, I've wore them out before, but uh, uh, it took a lot of years to do it. Anyhow, um, don't get a don't get a Harbor Freight one. They're garbage. I've seen those in a few places if you, that I've been to, and not impressed. Anyhow, don't do that. Get you a good one. Um, so, all these patterns are just repeating. They're just repeating uh, of the same thing over and over again. And you can buy belt patterns online. That's not my deal, so. Uh, but you can find them. There's several uh, good ones out there. And uh, there's books that uh, different leather suppliers are going to carry. Um, I think they all pretty much carry them. And they'll have patterns in there. And you can change those patterns some too, but... Uh, the people that design these patterns and stuff, they don't charge a lot for them. Just, just buy them. Don't steal them. <laughs> they put a lot of work in it. That's how they make their, make their, make their money or part, part of it. And uh, just, just pay them for their work. Don't, uh, don't do that to them. It ain't right. You wouldn't want someone stealing your work and getting it for free. And, and, uh, you know, it, it affects your bottom line, your family, and everything else. So just, just don't do that. So because these are repeating, they're all going to end in a different. And they're anywhere from four to seven inches, the repeating pattern. But it has to end somewhere. So um, the amount of space you're going to have on your tip is going to vary. Now, if I was putting initials or something or a brand on the end of this. I would have ended it here and not had this last leaf on here so that's going to vary depending on how you're doing it um, or your particular project but so the next step is going to be cutting this in and i already see that i forgot my strop so hold on just one second and i'll be right back okay here we go Got my strop. This is just a, it was a purchase leather strop. You can make one or just use a scrap piece of leather. I like having a handle. Now you don't want to get a bunch of this on your, this uh, polishing compound. You don't want to get a bunch of that on your, on here and get it on your workspace and, and uh, cause it will transfer to your belt. And this here is a cheapo tandy swivel knife. One of their cheaper ones. But it's rubber, it's fatter, it's easier for me to hold on to. Um, I like this swivel knife. And I have expensive ones. And I use them too, but this is one of my favorites. I mostly use this for long straight lines or just long lines, not fine detailed stuff. Um, that's a quarter inch, uh, Phil Grease style blade, slanted blade. And uh, a lot of people won't use that when they're cutting in their stuff. They want a straight blade or whatever. It's all personal preference. It doesn't make any difference. And this blade here, this is another, this is a Tandy Pro uh, swivel knife. And it was the skinny one. And uh, I don't like having the gnarls, the texturing on there. It, if I'm working a swivel knife all day long or for long periods, it starts wearing on me. And uh, I don't care for that. So I put some of the, I put one of those, and it was skinny. And uh, I don't like that either. I got carpal tunnel pretty bad in my hands, and and uh, holding that skinny little piece there really. Uh, uh, bothered me so I put one of those uh, pencil rubber pencil things uh, that goes over it on there and I kept using those and I kept splitting 
And so I just had to keep replacing and replacing them. So I finally just uh, put some tape around it and that holds it pretty good. And this is an eighth inch field green blade. Um, again, most people wouldn't use this for cutting in, cutting in things. Um, the, uh, most of them prefer a straight tight blade. Let's see if I got one. I don't actually. I don't have one because I don't <laughs> I don't use them so I won't be able to show you that but um, I guess some people's concern is that you're gonna cut all the way through the project that's never been a problem for me but this drop will polish that and that's really all the sharpening that you need on those and the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna run down this. Now this is missing. Missing part of it here. That little line there, I just seen that was missing there. And, and I'm probably cutting halfway, pretty close to halfway. If you're too shallow, what will happen is, is that your impression, especially on 8 to 9 ounce leather, will be deeper than your cut. And you'll see the edge of that cut as your tooling wraps around, instead of that cut being down the bottom, if that makes any sense. So if it wraps around, and uh, when you're, because when you're deep, uh, impression goes, then you're cut will actually be up on the edge of this where it, let's say this is the top of this leaf your fingers top this leaf and your cuts only right here but your impressions down here you're gonna see that cut and uh, it looks horrible <laughs> so we try to avoid that by cutting plenty deep enough it's actually you don't want to cut all the way through the leather obviously but you want it deep enough so you're not seeing that cut And my tooling impressions are pretty deep. That's just how I tool and some people's varies. I've got limited mobility in my hands, so I don't I can't run a swivel knife the way that a lot of people do. I start talking, I got a little off right there. We'll make up for that. Okay. Now down at this end, I'm not going to show you this, but because of the way my hands are, I have to pick up and set down more so than other people. Now I do like to let this, sometimes I let this case and then cut it in and I can actually get a little cleaner job like that. So. But we're not doing all that today. We're just trying to. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to cut that line right there. And. I'm going to add a little cup thing right there and that's gonna bevel bevel there and uh, gonna give me something so my die so at this end um, my die actually in this one I, there is no die but if I was dying this my edge my die would run up to this along this outside edge so you're creating an outside edge here for your die to go to anyhow okay let's let's finish Let's finish running this here, our long straight part, so we can get to. Now, in the places where, you, like these leaves stick over the edge, of course you don't want to cut across those. So when this is done, it's going to look like that, and this, all this pattern is kind of in the background here some, but then it's going to look like you got interrupted edge and it's going to be sticking up over the edge, which 
just kind of looks pretty cool. and straight <coughs> and I'm gonna try to I'm not able to just move this how I want to move it because I gotta try and stay in frame so anyways and then we're gonna just follow this with a swivel knife On every single line well some of them might not but most of these on here are all going to have a swivel knife different patterns be different there's some that you won't want to uh, depending on what you're doing some patterns when you're doing things especially carving animals or people you have reference lines and things that uh, that will have contours and things that you want to do into it later that you don't cut those lines but these will be cut sometimes I exaggerate what I had going on there going to repeat this I don't know how much you that you can see through my hand but hopefully I'm trying to I'm normally I'd be more up I'm trying to do this so you can see what's happening here And these, I actually try not to, uh, you see these aren't all the way over to that edge. I uh, try not to let, I don't want two cuts completely connecting. I want to leave a little, a little something there. going to repeat this all the way up not sure how I'm gonna do this video for sure I don't know if I'm gonna not sure if I'm gonna do this in multiple parts or how I'm gonna do it so it's probably probably is going to be in multiple parts. I'll probably do uh, I might do the layout part in part one, and then do the do some tooling in part two, and then maybe the finish in part three. It just depends on how long the videos are. But I'm gonna turn this off watching my videos you know that I don't do any editing and it's not that I don't want to it's just that I don't have time so I'm gonna pause you right here and then I'm gonna finish finish cutting the rest of this in and uh, that allow me to move it a little better and and uh, be a little faster too so uh, okay so I'll be right back all right I'm back and 
we're going to tool some of this. And uh, let's see here. Let's see, we're about 35 minutes into it. So actually, we're going to hold off on the tooling, and this is going to end part one. And then we'll come back in part two, and uh, we'll do some tooling. And because uh, that we'll go over about 30 minutes of the tooling, it won't take very long to tool this. We probably won't show the whole thing, but we'll show part of it. Um, but this will conclude part one. Um, be sure to watch the next one's coming. But y'all be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll have more leather content coming up, and you may be someone that's into something else that I'm that I film on here flint napping or bees or something else and you might enjoy seeing this too it might be a hobby you want to take up um, or you may who knows you may want to get into it and then turn it into a business someday like I did but uh, I'll come back and, and we'll do the next one so hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on part two